Yo gamers, what's going on? It's Ryuga here with another killer video. This time we're going to be doing a killer guide, but it's not for a specific killer. It's going to be for the survivor spawn locations. Now, I do feel like this is an important aspect of Dead by Daylight because getting in your initial chase as fast as humanly possible is probably one of the most important things in a match. Getting that first chase, getting the pressure started, all that jazz. So, I went ahead and recorded every single map how fast I can find a survivor and the general rule for finding survivors on certain maps. That way, you're not wasting a lot of time. Before we get into it, I do want to mention my analytics show. Most of you watching the video aren't subscribed, so if you want to hit the subscribe button if you enjoyed the video, please feel free. Other than that, we're going to jump into it. I invented a little little thing I called the, the arc method, and this is the general stance I use to find survivors. However, certain maps have slightly different ways of finding the survivors. Nonetheless, let's jump into it. Let's learn. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys there. All right. So when I said see you guys there, I meant see you guys in MS Paint. So I'm going to show you guys the arc method. The arc method is really simple. Let's go ahead and draw a general idea for a map. This is a map, right? Main shape is kind of square for a lot of maps, rectangle, whatever. So let's say you're the killer. Let's say you spawn here. The arc method is pretty simple. You draw an arrow to the furthest point of the map from you, and you draw an arc. Along that arc are the most likely spawn locations for survivors from you. And it doesn't matter where you are, you can pretty much apply this everywhere. If you spawn here, more than likely you're going to draw an arrow to the furthest parts of the map. The survivors are more than likely going to spawn here on both of these arcs. Or they're going to spawn on both of them. This applies to almost every single map in the game with a few exceptions. Or let's say the map is shaped something like, like this. How do I fucking draw this? Kind of like this, and then there's another thing, and then there's a big old thing right here. Depending on where you spawn, you always want to draw the arrows to the furthest parts of the map. To you, because that's always where the survivors are going to spawn. This rule applies almost every single map. And you know, I can sit here and talk about it all I want, but I'm going to show you with the map schematics and the uh, maps, you know, shown as I'm in them to reveal the spawn locations using the arc method and then for the maps where the arc method doesn't necessarily work little tips and tricks to help find survivors let's jump into it it took a long time to record all of these matches so big shout out to the people who helped me in my discord make sure you join it and uh yeah let's just let's just do it all right so let's go ahead and talk about spawn locations. We're going to go through every single map with every single, you know, kind of variant. So the first one we're going to do are going to be the Auto Haven Wrecker maps. Let's start with Azeroth's Resting Place and see if we can apply some of these rules that I kind of showed you to this. So the first thing we're going to do is look at where we spawned. And I have a map schematic right here to show you. So we spawned kind of by basement. So let's go ahead and start by making an analysis. So we spawned kind of by basement. We spawned right here. And we're going to kind of make that little line I told you to the other side of the map. So we're going to go right here, kind of point an arrow through in the middle, and we're going to draw an arc. Survivors more than likely spawned along this arc. Now things to know about these kind of maps that are split in half is sometimes you can have a little, little like kind of outliers where survivors can sometimes spawn in the middle, and you can sometimes have what's called a god spawn, which we'll get into later, on this side of the map. But that's more prevalent when you have killers with low tear radiuses. I don't think this applies to undetectable killers, but it definitely applies to killers that have very small tear radiuses. So let's go ahead and check, you know, the information I just showed you. So, we're going to go ahead and spawn in. The first thing I'm going to do is just give a quick glance to see if I see a god spawn. I usually don't give too much time looking, and then we're going to run straight through the middle. Right away, we can see almost exactly where I marked on here, somewhere in between. We have a survivor spawn. This lets you get into a chase almost immediately with no waste of time. Now, however, I'm still going to show you and see if the other spawn locations are right. Let's go along our arc and see if we see any spawns. So there's going to be none over here, but frequently they spawn near the main building. 
but it looks like they spawn in the jungle gym and you found the rest of the survivors. So applying the knowledge you can already see, we went straight across almost completely diagonal and found almost all of the survivors along this arc with a single outlier. Let's jump into another scenario, which we will call the God Spawn for Azeroth's resting place. All right, so a God Spawn is pretty much when a survivor on Azeroth spawns on the exact same side as you. And this happens when you have a killer with a very low tear radius. And an easy way to tell if you've got a God Spawn is based on kind of how you spawn. So if you look at this, I spawned on the Killer Shack side, but I kind of spawned tucked in here. It's kind of like a weird angle. So that already gives me a vibe that is pushing me away from this side over here. So I'm going to immediately check this side because I have a low tear radius to see if the survivors are there. That's what I would do if I have a low tear radius killer because it's quite the awkward spawn. And almost immediately, if you look right here, you can see a survivor already. That's a god spawn in less than three seconds, five seconds into the game. I already know where survivor is. And there happens to be so lucky that there's two, possibly even three. I can't tell. I think there were three there. But that's a general guideline for low tear radius killers on Azeroths and God Spawns. Let's go into the next variant of Auto Haven. Alright, so the next one we're going to talk about is going to be Blood Lodge. We're going to keep applying the same logic and you're going to hear me be extremely repetitive over this video about the tactics used to find the survivors. So we're going to look at where we spawned on Blood Lodge. So you can see we spawned by Killer Shack kind of in this area right here. This little tuck-in, I need to make sure I have my brush like this, this little tuck-in area right here. So immediately, we're gonna think about where the survivors are gonna spawn. I'm gonna kind of draw arrows opposite because this is an awkward spawn. So we kind of have different scenarios in which survivors can spawn. Overall, creating a general arc of either here, here, or here. In situations like this, it's kind of RNG where you go. So, you kind of get to pick and choose. More than likely, the one straight ahead is not going to be the option. So, you have two bets. Either over here, or over here, or both. So, we're going to go ahead and test this and see what happens. Sometimes, if you have hills, you can see an advantage to kind of look around. So, we make a decision to go to one of the sides, right in the corner. And we see a survivor through the jungle gym. And we poke our head through, and it happens to be pretty much all four survivors are there. So that's luck. If you happened to decide to go the other way, then you wouldn't have found a survivor, and you more than likely would have lost a gen. Sometimes shit like that happens, and unfortunately there's no way to tell you how to play like that, because, or how to like counter that. Because usually what would happen is two survivors would spawn over here, over here, and then two survivors would spawn somewhere in this little area over here. But sometimes you get unlucky and all the survivors spawn together. And that's still a general guideline for Blood Lodge. I can give you another example. Like sometimes you'll spawn over here. Like where all of the survivors spawn. In this case you would draw an arrow all the way straight out. More than likely the survivors are going to have spawned somewhere in this area. Almost guaranteed. Just keep using this logic applied to almost every single map. So let's move on to the next Auto Haven variant. Alright, so the next one we're going to talk about is Wretched Shop. This one is kind of easy to guess where they're going to spawn. Um, usually they spawned around this main building over here almost every single time. But we're going to go ahead and apply the same logic. So looking at this, we spawned at Killer Shack kind of on a hill. So we spawned over here. Now we're going to do the general guideline of drawing an arrow across the map and then making a little arc. The survivors more than likely spawned somewhere over here. Pretty much guaranteed. Let's go ahead and check that logic. We're going to go ahead and walk that way right now. And pretty much instantly we start finding survivors. Right here. And then, you know, along the same area we found them over here. And then we found more on this side as well. So we pretty much exactly found survivors where I told you that we would find them. We found one right here. So I know it's kind of hard to tell where I'm drawing. Right here, we found one. Actually, it was right here. And then we found the other two kind of over there. So pretty much exactly along the arc. And this works exactly, you know, doesn't matter how you do it. It works the same way every single time. 
let's say you get, you know, you spawn over here. You're going to draw an arc. And they're going to spawn somewhere in this area, more than likely. Sometimes you can have god spawns where the survivor will spawn, like, over here. But following the general principle, it's usually better to go along this little arc. And now, the final Auto Haven Wreckers we're going to be looking at is going to be Wrecker's Yard. This one is also kind of easy to predict, but the spawns here can be a little more spread out, I would say. So, looking at here, we can pan the camera and figure out where we spawn. So, we spawned in the area right over here. Facing kind of like this little bus. So, we have many places that, get, that they can spawn. But the main thing we're going to do is draw an arrow pretty much diagonally. Draw our little arc this way. And then draw the X's along it. More than likely, survivors are going to kind of spawn somewhere in this area. So let's test that and go straight in and see what we're, you know, looking at. Immediately, we go along the arc and kind of try to figure out where they spawn. It's always good to pan around just in case you get some odd survivor spawns. Just like that, you already found a survivor. Again, keep following along the arc. And you're going to see if you find even more survivors. And just like that, you found the rest of the survivors. Three spawned here, one spawned here. Still, it was along the arc. Once again, this method works. Let's move on to the next set of maps, Macmillan Estate. Alright, so the next set we're looking at is Suffocation Pit, which is a Macmillan Estate map. This is very similar to Azeroth's Resting Place. So, for example, let's go ahead and see where we spawn. We spawn right here in the main building. So, like always, we are going to draw. This is where we spawned. Draw an arrow across the map, draw an arc, and survivors probably spawn somewhere along here. Occasionally, just like Azeroth's, you can get a little spawn in the middle. Whether it happens or not is up to RNG, but along the arc is your best bet. So, let's go ahead and see. God spawns on this map are not as frequent as on Azeroth's. Just like that, we found survivors, and we can pretty much instantly initiate a chase. And they were right here in our arc. Um, so, like I said earlier, the god spawn on this map isn't as prevalent as on Azeroth's. However, if you're using a low tear radius killer, I'm pretty sure it increases the chances of you getting a spawn in the middle, comparatively. But the god spawns just don't happen as much. So let's move on to the next variant. So the next map we're looking at is Pole Tower. Pole Tower has very, very, very easy spawn locations. Almost always there's going to be a spawn near the middle building. Almost always. So let's go ahead and check it out. Where did we spawn? We spawned right here. Now we have the general guideline of drawing an arc diagonally, like so, and seeing if survivors are going to spawn in this area. However, for this map, very similar to Thompson House, which we'll get into, there is an exception. You almost always have a spawn near the middle building, so I would almost always instantly go to this side to check on a survivor spawn. This is strictly for this map, so let's go ahead and see what happens. We spawn in as Wraith. And then we go to check the other side. They already missed a skill check, we know that survivors have spawned over there. But now we're also going to go check on our arc to see if there's any survivors, you know, that spawned in the little arc that we drew. And just like that, we can see we had a man spawn in Killer Shack. Can't quite find the other survivor, but they're more than likely somewhere in that arc. Just like that, all of the rules I just told you about this came into action on the very first game. So following these will almost always get you into a chase within the first 15 to 20 seconds of the game. Let's move on to the next variant. All right, so the next one on the list is Groaning Storehouse. So if you guys have noticed, we're getting very, very repetitive, but you know, stick around because some of these maps have a little, you know, different tweaks to the rules of spawn that you should probably know. But let's go ahead and see where we spawn. We spawn by the log tile, which is right over here. 
The general rule for the Groaning Storehouse is that you're going to draw two diagonals. One here and one here. Right this way, right this way. Now, survivors normally can spawn either over here or over here or both, you know, can happen. Somewhere along there and then somewhere along here. This has a lot, a lot, a lot of spawn locations, so sometimes getting a, you know, a chase very fast on this map can be difficult. Especially if they have spine chill and hide from you. So let's go ahead and check it out and see where they spawn. Almost immediately, we find a survivor near the basement. Now, that's not quite in our arc, but it's in the path of the arc. Just like I said, sometimes the spawns on this map can be a little weird. We also found two more survivors right in the arc that we drew. Already, we have found three survivors. More than likely, the fourth survivor was probably somewhere in this little arc. Something to remember about maps that are shaped like this is that wherever you spawn, if it has an odd shape like this, often you'll need to draw two arrows because it has kind of two different main sections of the map. Unlike some maps that are like square, so you only really have one area that they'll in the arc that they'll spawn. If you spawn here, you draw two arrows that way and that way. If you spawn here, you draw two arrows that way and that way. You're going to have many different spawn locations of survivors, so Groaning Storehouse can be a little more difficult to predict survivor spawn locations because sometimes you can get lucky or unlucky. You can go here and there's no survivors and all four survivors spawn along this arc and you already lost a generator. Those are things you have to take a gamble with and sometimes you just lose. But let's go ahead and move on to the next variant. Alright, so the next variant we're going to be talking about is Shelter Woods. Shelter Woods is actually a pretty easy map to predict survivor spawn locations. So let's go ahead and jump into it and see where we spawned. We spawned near the basement. And in all my times of playing Killer, I have learned that if you spawn anywhere on this side of the map over here, almost always survivors seem to spawn in this corner. I don't know why that is, but it happens a lot. So you're going to draw your little arrow kind of straight across the map, and you have this kind of big section that survivors can spawn on. So this one can be trickier. However, this area is almost always the spawn location for Shelter Woods if you spawn in this area. So let's go ahead and put this to the test. We spawn right where I marked, and we're going to go straight to where I said. Almost always it works. We just head straight there. Nice ruin spawn, by the way. And just like that, we found two survivors, three survivors, and the fourth survivor in this jungle gym. All of them within this arc, all very, very close to one another. And this happens almost every single time. Now, there are times where maybe you'll spawn over here as killer. Apply the same logic. You know, survivors are going to spawn somewhere in this arc. So that's where I would go. That's where I would look. And you'll almost always find a survivor. Let's move on to the last variant, which is going to be Ironworks of Misery. All right, so here's our schematic for Ironworks of Misery. Let's go ahead and test it and see what we do, see where we spawned and apply what we have learned. So we can already see that we have spawned in this area. Uh, let me look at this and orient myself. Right here, right here. We have spawned in this area. So we're gonna go ahead and draw our little arc to this side right here. And then we're gonna draw our X's, which is where the survivors are going to be spawning. And let's go see. Just like that, we found two survivors. Off the bat, we can immediately start a chase. And then we found the last two survivors, which are a little outside of the arc. So sometimes you get spawns that are a little awkward, but, you know, in an actual game, you're not going to care about those guys anyways. You're going to have already been in a chase with the people that you found over here. So just like that, we've already won our first chase, found them, and we are good to go. So applying this to almost every map, this is the best strategy 
to find a survivor. So let's go ahead and move on to the next set of maps, which are going to be the corn maps, which we all love as killer. All right, so the first old wind map we're going to talk about is going to be Fractured Cowshed. So the best thing about Fractured Cowshed is you almost always, always, always know where the survivors spawn. So let's go ahead and look and see where we spawned here. We spawned in kind of, where are we? This-ish area. And now, normally the rules you would say, oh, well, I should draw an arrow straight across and look for survivors over here, right? Wrong. This is Fractured Cowshed. Anywhere you spawn, immediately run to the cowshed, period. You will find a survivor almost every single time. For example, let's go ahead and watch this and see what happens. We spawn very close to the cow shed, but we're still going to run straight there. And just like that, we found a survivor in like not even five seconds. Now we're still going to go investigate the regular arc and see if we find a survivor along our arc because sometimes they follow the spawn, you know, pattern. Just like that, we found another survivor and let's keep going. And we found a, another survivor along the arc. And then there's one in Killer Shack. So the thing with Cold or uh, Cow Shed is that it has a lot of variety in the spawn locations, and it frequently spawns survivors apart. So if you spawn in weird areas, almost always go to the Cow Shed because that is almost 100% of the time where you're gonna find a survivor. You're not gonna spawn here and be like, oh, I don't know, I'm gonna go over to Killer Shack because I feel like it. No, that's a bad idea. You're not going to be like, oh, I'm going to go over here to this jungle gym because maybe there's a survivor. Nope. You're going to always run to the main building. And if you spawn in the main building uh, right here, then you just kind of cry about it because you draw your arc. And when it comes to cold, when your arc is pretty much this big, when it comes to cow shed, and they can spawn literally anywhere. So pretty much hope that you don't spawn in the main building because you could spawn here, here, here. Here, it doesn't matter. Run to the main building. You will always find a survivor there, almost every time. So, that's how you win, you know, finding a survivor super fast on that map. Let's move on to the next variant. Alright, so the next map we're going to talk about is Rotten Fields. This one is probably on the higher, you know, priority of... I don't know if priority is the right word, but it's all like on the tier list, it's up there on difficult map spawns like difficult survivors to find at like the initial spawn so let's go ahead and see where we spawn let's orient ourselves so it looks like we spawned right over here so what we're gonna do because we don't have a lot of visibility our best bet is either find the high place and check spawns so usually there's like a tractor over here and you'll look around or you kind of draw your arc straight across the map and you look for the survivors there I tend to try to find a high place at first, see if I see a survivor, and then go to the little arc. We'll see what happens and where they spawn. And just like that, we found a tractor. And I'm Papega, so I fell off. I'm going to look around, but not waste too much time because I can't spend seven years looking. And then we are going to follow the arc. Just like that, we already found a survivor. We're going to keep checking along the arc to see if maybe there's another survivor there. Which, there are. Which is why the general rule of following the arc is just, you know, the main plan. You can't deviate from the arc, except on the maps where I specifically told you, you know, how their spawns work. It's very, very reliable. Now, sometimes you can get unlucky and have survivors, like, maybe all four spawn over here, or all four spawn over here, away from the arc. But, usually, it is very reliable. So, let's go ahead and move on to the next variant of the map. Alright, so, the next map on the list is going to be Torment Creek. Let's apply the same rules and see where we spawn. Alright, so, we spawned over here. Right near the base, and we kind of spawned in the road. Let me make sure I... Did that right no 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 i lied we spawned like over here so one thing about this map is if killer if you spawn anywhere over here in this circle more than likely survivors have spawned over here over here over here 
But if you ever doubt yourself, like I said, draw the arc straight this way. Survivors are going to be somewhere in this location. Sometimes if you're a low tier radius killer, you can get a god spawn in which survivors could spawn somewhere in this arc. But let's go ahead and test it out and see what I would do in this situation. I spawned here. I would immediately follow this arc and see if I could find a survivor. It's almost a guarantee that a survivor is over here. Just like that, I've already found a survivor and wasted almost no time. We're going to check to see if there's any more survivors in the area and see where they're spawning. Looks like there's more in that same exact area. And just like that, we found three or four survivors. And now we found even more. So along both of these arcs. However, this one is the more risky play because all four survivors could have spawned over here while most of the time all four won't spawn here because they're very close to you. It'll be more split. So this is almost always your best bet over here. Now, sometimes there are situations where you spawn like over here. Then you're just going to draw the arc this way and they're probably going to be somewhere in this area. Let's go ahead and watch another clip from Torment Creek and see what we got. All right, so I'm going to apply the same rules to this one. Where did I spawn? I spawned like kind of near Killer Shack again. I'd say I spawned like right here. I'm going to apply the same logic and I'm going to zip straight to this side of the main building. It almost always works on this map. It's very similar to Fractured Cow Shed. I ran straight there. And I found a survivor. Now, they were kind of over here, but nonetheless, what you want to do is you want to run here and then kind of circle around in which you'll find them. So that's the general rule for Torment Creek. It's very easy to find a survivor here, but if you spawn over here, your looking range is going to be a lot more wide because they can be pretty much anywhere over here. But if you spawn here, 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 any side of this map, they're almost always going to be right around this main building. So let's go ahead and move on to the next variant. All right, so Rancid Abattoir is high on the list of easy maps to find the spawn of the survivors because it's almost always the exact opposite of you, no matter what. So let's go ahead and see where we spawned. It looks like we spawned over in this area right here. So we're going to kind of draw our arrow. Survivors are going to be along this arc on this side almost every time. So let's go ahead and check it out. I'm going to skip forward to save us some time. So we're in this jungle gym over here. Doesn't look like there was a survivor spawn. But if we look in this area, we can find pretty much all of the survivors just chilling by Killer Shack. Once again, this map is easy. No matter where you are, where you spawn, you almost always know where the survivors are. If you spawn here, they're going to be somewhere over here. If you spawn here, they're going to be somewhere over here. If you spawn here, they're going to be somewhere over here, over here. It's a very easy map to find the spawn locations of the survivors. Let's move on to the next variant. Alright, I would say that the Thompson House is also a very easy map to find where the survivors spawn because they almost always spawn near the main building or the basement. Almost always. Sometimes they spawn by pick tree too, but we'll go ahead and check it out. So let me see where we spawned. We spawned in this area right here. So if I spawned here as killer, my first thing I would do would be immediately beeline here. Because almost always that's where survivor is going to be. My secondary choice would be killer shack. And my tertiary choice would be uh, pick tree or truck or whatever the fuck is over here. So let's go ahead and check it out and see how this pays off. We go over here. We immediately see a survivor. Therefore, we can immediately initiate a chase. No time wasted. However, we're still going to keep an eye on the other spawn locations just to see. Looks like no survivors spawned near Killer Shack. That means that there's pretty much only one other place the survivors could spawn, and that is near Pig Tree. And just like that, we have found the rest of the survivors. Let's go ahead and move on. We are now done with the, you know, the OG maps. We're going to move on to a bit more of the weird ones. So 
let's go ahead and jump into it. So the next map we're going to be talking about on the list is the Springwood, aka Batman Preschool variants. There's like one, two, three, four, five different variants. We're only going to really cover one because the general principle applies to almost all of them. Let's go ahead and check out where we spawn. We spawned kind of near the main building behind it. So let's go ahead and mark. We spawned right here. If we spawn anywhere over here or on this side of the map, we can almost immediately beeline over here because survivors are probably going to spawn along the road. Secondary spawn location, if I spawn over here, is also going to be Killer Shack. Let's go ahead and verify that and see what happens. Just like that, we ran straight to the road and immediately found two survivors. Now, let's go ahead and see if we can find the rest of the survivors. Sometimes RNG is with you and you'd find the other two where I am now, or in the house. But unfortunately, that wasn't the case. So we went ahead and went all the way to the Killer Shack. Which shows the last two survivors spawned right here. Let's go ahead and give you one more example. We're going to pull up and see the second Batum. Let me go ahead and reset all these effects. See where we spawn. So this time we spawn like in, in the road. So the first thing I would do in this scenario is either go straight this way because sometimes they spawn in the road or go straight to Killer Shack. So what I would do personally is go straight to Killer Shack. It is the more reliable choice out of the two. And just like that, we instantly found a survivor. There's also one that happened to spawn over here near the main house. But nonetheless, we would have instantly been in a chase. Go ahead and see where the other one spawned. Looks like we got one here. And one kind of over here. So at this point, it didn't matter where we went. Because this is such a weird condensed map, you almost always are able to find a survivor. But your main bets are along this main road, and depending how close it is, you might want to check out Killer Shack instead. And this almost always applies to the Batam maps, depending on where you spawn. Just figure it out. The whole arrow arc doesn't work too well on this map. You want to think about the main structures. So if you spawn over here, they're more than likely going to be behind the main building or in Killer Shack. Or if you spawn by Killer Shack, you're going to be more along the road or behind the main building. So those are things to think about when you're approaching the bottom variants of the map. It's more difficult to predict, but as long as you keep those things in mind, you can almost always find a survivor within, you know, 20, 30 seconds. All right, so now we've come to another difficult crossroad. Disturbed Ward is a difficult one to predict spawn locations. So let's go ahead and jump into it and try to apply some of our logic and see exactly what happens. So we spawned by Killer Shack. So we are going to go ahead and mark it up on our map. It's not marked on here, but I'm pretty sure Killer Shack is like right here. So our best bet is to draw our arrow on this map and try to figure out where the survivors spawned. That is the most reliable way. Let's go ahead and see what happens. Usually, if you draw an arrow straight through the middle building, you will always find a survivor near there. I check over there. Sometimes you get a god spawn, sometimes you don't. But usually, you don't, and it's not reliable to check that area. And just like that, we found two survivors. Three survivors, all four survivors. All we did was draw our little arrow, and then follow the arc. We went around here, checked in here, and then just went here, and we found the survivors chilling. So... That's a very reliable thing to do on the Disturbed Ward map. No matter where you spawn, if you spawn here, you're going to draw your arrow along here. And if your arc touches any of these right here, assume that maybe a survivor spawned over there. For example, if you did this and you draw your arc right here, and your arc comes out like this, you can assume possibly survivors here and possibly survivors down here as well. That is your general guideline for the Disturbed Ward. Let's go ahead and check out Father Campbell's Chapel. Alright, so for spawn locations, Father Campbell's Chapel is actually pretty easy. If you don't spawn in the circus, they almost always spawn in the circus. Um, but if you do spawn in the circus, they're almost always near Killer Shack. And that's just literally how it goes. 
we're going to check out where we spawned. Looks like we spawned near the circus. So we are going to draw us right here. Draw our arrow this way. Draw the arc. And the survivors are more than likely going to be over there. Let's go ahead and check it out. And just like that, instantly found all the survivors along the arc. That's the general rule to follow on Father Campbell's Chapel. It works almost every single time. Uh, very rarely you'll spawn in the middle building. If that's the case, there's probably survivors in Killer Shack and in the circus. But the circus is the most reliable bet anytime you don't spawn in it. Um, so those are the rules you should follow. Let's go ahead and move on and we'll check out all of the indoor maps because those ones are very, very, very difficult spawn locations to find. All right, so the game is a very, very, very tricky map to understand the spawn locations. There are multiple places survivors can spawn. So let's go ahead and talk about them. The places that survivors can spawn on the game are frequently the exit gates. So that's going to be on the top floor. The other top floor spawn locations are going to be the Mario Tunnel. And if you don't know what the Mario Tunnel is, it's the tunnel that you uh, vault into and jump all the way down to the second, uh, you know, the below floor. And then the most common spawn location after that is the bathroom generator. So that's kind of underground or the area above it. And then they can also spawn in the little staircase. This is going to be difficult to describe. Um, it forms an L at the corner of the map, and it has a very strong palette there. They can spawn either there or above it. You'll see what I mean when we engage this clip. But the first thing I would do every single time is check the exit gates for survivors. So, and as you'll see, we spawn close to the bathroom, so I'm not going to bother checking that out. I'm going to run to an exit gate. Just like that. Found a survivor in the exit gate. We're going to go try to look for the other survivors and see if we can find them. She's kind of close to the exit gate, but she's between it. We probably wouldn't have found her that easily. This is the Mario tunnel that I'm talking about, so he spawned below it. But, you know, it's kind of hard to find the survivors that spawn in those areas. So, reliably, the spawn or the uh, exit gates are the best bet most of the time. Let's go ahead and check out the uh, second example real quick. Uh, where are we at? Uh, the game. So we spawned at the bottom floor. We're going to go to the top floor and immediately look for the exit gates and see if we find a survivor through those. We're having trouble finding the exit gate because sometimes it is very confusing. But just like that, there's a survivor up there. Now, whether we would have found him without him clicking his flashlight, probably not. But that is the Mario tunnel that I'm talking about, where they can spawn. And then we check the exit gate. Doesn't look like we got such luck. Because sometimes this map can be very, very, very difficult to find survivors. But we can see over here that there are some. And this is the little L that I was talking about. We found the survivors right here and down there. And below that, there's an L-shaped wall. The survivors can spawn there as well. Let's go ahead and move on to the underground complex. All right, so understanding the underground complex spawns is a little tricky. The best way to look at it is 
using the arc, which can be kind of confusing. But there are a few tricks that I can use to kind of help you understand where to look. So we spawned right here in the, you know, area that has the generator above you. So we spawned right here. Your best bets are going either to the left and to the right. And then looking at the exit gates, just like the game, and seeing if a survivor spawned near the exit gates. And even if they didn't, more than likely the survivor spawned in these areas over here. So that's your best bet, is checking the exit gates first, and then checking the nearest corner to the exit gates, seeing if that's where the survivors are. So let's go ahead and jump into it and see where exactly we can find them. So you'll see here, I do the first thing that I told you guys to do. Look for the exit gate. Looks like I found them, but no survivors spawn over here. So I'll go down to the corner of the wall. And just like that, I found two survivors. I'm going to keep looking, see if I find the other two. And they are chilling in the exit gate. So it's pretty reliable information. Check the exit gates and check the corners near the exit gates. You'll almost always find a survivor. Let's go ahead and look at our second example for underground. Now this is when we spawn somewhere else. Uh, I don't really know how to orient myself. Let me see where we spawned. But in situations where you don't spawn right here, which I think in this case we spawned somewhere right here, you want to check almost always this area because survivors, if you don't spawn there as killer, will almost always spawn there. It's similar to Fractured Cow Shed, where if you don't spawn there, survivors almost always do. Let's go ahead and check it out. You'll see the first thing I did was run over here. And just like that, we found two survivors. We check upstairs to see if we find the rest of them. But we had no such luck. And then we run over to the corner and we found the rest of the survivors. So we spawned here. Survivors kind of spawned over here in this little arc. Um, but that's kind of how you do the underground complex. It's a very, very difficult map to find the spawns. So the general guidelines is check the exit gate locations, and if not, check the corners near them. And then if you don't spawn in that two-story room, I would check that first as well. Let's go ahead and move on to Larry's. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about treatment theater. Larry's is very similar in finding the spawns of survivors like the other indoor maps. The first thing you want to do are find the exit gates and the corners closest to the exit gates. So as long as you know the map pretty well, on the, it, it kind of looks like this. They didn't have a good, um, a good picture of the new Larry's. They only had old Larry's. This is what the new Larry's looked like. It has a long way this way and that way. And then it has a very short wall on this end. So the exit gates are almost always, or are always on the long walls. So what you want to do when you spawn in is look for an exit gate. Looks like I already found one, which is right behind me. First thing I do is go straight to the exit gate, and then I go to the corners that are near the exit gate. Looks like we found another exit gate. Just like that, we'll keep following the rules and stay near the corners. Sometimes they spawn outside or in them, so I always check it. And just like that, we found them chilling in the corner. Looks like that's actually all the survivors. Just like that, we found them all. Let's go ahead and look at the second example, which is right here. So we try to pull the same logic here. We look for an exit gate, which is right here. Didn't find anybody, so we look for the second exit gate over in this area. And just like that, we found survivors kind of nearish to the exit gate. So anytime there's a map that's inside, your best bet is always look for the exit gates and the corners closest to them. A lot of the time you will find the survivors lingering in those areas. This works for the game. 
this works for Larry's, this works for the underground complex. So that's kind of your guide to the underground maps and finding survivors relatively fast. But let's go ahead and move on to a different uh, variant of maps. All right, so the next variant of map we're going to be talking about is Haddonfield, and Haddonfield has a sh pretty simple plan on finding the survivors. I'll go ahead and show you. You usually spawn on one of these sides of the road, usually over here or over here, or maybe you'll spawn over here. Nonetheless, the main rule is, depending on where you spawn, you'll want to go to the end of the road right here, and then you're going to want to run straight down and check either left or the right side. So that's the general guideline, no matter what side you spawn. If you spawn over here, you're going to want to run here, check both sides. While you're running down the road, you're going to want to listen to like generator sounds and all that stuff, and you're going to want to look to your left and to your right, to your left and to your right, and to your left and to the right. Make sure you always are aware and looking around, making sure there are no like survivors kind of snaking their way through here. Let's go ahead and show the example of that. So you spawn in, immediately go straight down the road while keeping your eye on all the different areas between the houses. So you'll want to check these areas first, see if the survivors spawned. If not, oh well. Looks like we didn't get quite lucky with the spawns here, but they did spawn behind the Myers house. Now if this were a normal game, they more than likely would have touched the generator in the Myers house already, and uh, we would have heard it when we walked by, or seen scratch marks when we looked into the building. Let's go ahead and look at the second example of Haddonfield, where we do the exact same thing. So we spawn over here. First thing we do is go straight down the road, while looking left and right. Then we get to the edge of the road. We have to pick a way to go, so we go left. And just like that, we have found survivors and we can initiate chase. No time wasted. Let's go ahead and move on to the next variation of maps. Alright, so the next maps we're going to talk about are going to be the Yamaoka Estate maps. First one we're going to do is Family Residence. This one is straightforward. If you spawn on one side of the map, they probably spawned on the other side. But frequently, you will spawn on this side, kind of near basement or whatever. And what you'll want to do is beeline straight for this left side, which is the most frequent spawn location. And if they're not there, visit the right side. Now sometimes, let's go ahead and look at where we spawned. We spawned right in front of this shrine. So what you'll want to do is beeline here. There'll probably be some survivors here. There might be some survivors here. And then there's also a possibility that there's some survivors here. But the more reliable spawn location is always right here to the left of the main building. So let's go ahead and check it out. We run straight there and we find two survivors. We can instantly initiate a chase. No time wasted. Let's go see where the next ones are. I would assume right next to them, but sometimes you don't get as lucky. So we go all the way down. And we find the other two survivors chilling on this side of the map, right over here. That's the general guideline for Yamaoka. It doesn't really matter where you spawn. If you spawn over here as killer, they more than likely are going to be at Killer Shack or in this little corner. If you spawn over here, once again, they're going to be over in the left side of the building or to the right of it and this is almost guaranteed every single time so that's the general principle you follow when you're trying to do the family residence let's go ahead and look at the uh, sanctum of wrath let me pull that up right now it is somewhere right here so the sanctum of wrath when you're doing it is very very similar to yamaoka no matter where you spawn, if you spawn here, or if you spawn here, or if you spawn here, spawn here. You're going to always want to go to the opposite side of the map and look for survivors. Because they're almost always going to be there, or they're going to be over here. Sometimes they can spawn really close, and they're going to be on like this side to you. But the more reliable thing is going to the main building and kind of overlooking the other side and seeing if you find a survivor that way. Let's go ahead and look at the video and see what happens. So 
if you have a sharp eye, you would have seen the survivor up there. And just like that, you've already found two survivors. There was a Steve next to her, if you didn't see. And then we'll check the other spawn locations that I thought it might be. Just right there. For example, we spawned right here. We went straight across. And we found all the survivors over here. Somewhere over here, which can happen. Not often do they spawn up there, but they do. But follow those rules, and in the Sanctum of Wrath, you'll be able to find the spawn locations. Super easy. Like I said, it's going to be a lot of repetitiveness. Just draw the arc. You will almost always, always, always find survivors in these arcs. Let's go ahead and move on to the next set of maps. All right, so the next map we're going to be talking about are going to be the swamp maps and their spawn locations. We're going to start with the Grim Pantry. So this one's kind of awkward, but anytime you spawn anywhere that's not the main building, you will almost always find a survivor there. So let's go ahead and check out where we spawn. We spawned right here on the pier. So my first bet is going to go straight here and look for survivors along this outskirt. Now, if I don't find everybody I'm looking for there, or at least one person, the next best bet is probably going to be beeline that way. Somewhere in this area, we're going to look for the survivors. So let's go ahead and check this out and see what happens. However, most of the time they're going to be behind the main building. That's the first thing I do. And just like that, we instantly found a survivor. We can initiate chase and we wasted almost no time. So we're going to go ahead and look for the rest of the survivors just to confirm our suspicions. And just like that, we can find them in the other area that I drew the arrow towards. This works in almost all of the spawn locations, no matter where you go. You could spawn on this side. The survivors are going to be near the pier and the main building. And if you spawn on the main building, the survivors are going to be split between here and the pier. Follow those guidelines. You'll almost always find a survivor within 20 seconds while you're on this map. Let's also go ahead and look at the Pale Rose. All right, so very similar to the Grim Pantry. The Pale Rose functions the exact same way. No matter where you spawn, you are going to look for the survivors at the main part. So it looks like we spawn like over here. Grab my brush. Over here. So instantly, we're going to look for the survivors at the big boat. No matter where we spawn, that's always the instant place that we go. And we'll see if it rewards us. And just like that, we found a survivor instantly. We can initiate chase and waste no time. Now, just keep following these guidelines on both the swamp maps, and you'll be okay every single time. Now, like I said, if you spawn on the big boat, there's probably going to be survivors that spawn on this side of the pier, and probably some that spawned near the basement. Follow the arc rules if you spawn on the main buildings, but if you don't spawn on the main buildings, just go straight there, and you'll almost always find a survivor. Let's go ahead and move on to the last few different maps. We're going to move on to uh, Mount Ormond. All right, so we're going to go ahead and talk about Mount Ormond and spawn locations for this one. They're pretty simple. Uh, use the arc method and you'll almost always find exactly what the survivors are. So let's go ahead and check out where we spawned. Looks like we spawned on the side near Killer Shack. So we spawned about right over here. So your best bet is drawing an arrow straight across using the arc method and checking it out. So the first area I would check out is this little uh, jungle gym long wall thing they have over there. That's where I would go first. So let's go ahead and check it out and see what exactly we find. So we go straight there and we've actually find all four survivors. So just like that. We're good to go. Initiate a chase, pressure the gens, good to go. I have one more example, let's go ahead and check it out. Now, in this example, I spawned at the same spot where I found them last time, in this area right here. So the best bet is drawing an arrow straight to the other side, and then gonna go check it out. 
Now, one thing to note about this map is if you spawn like this, you always should, instead of going through the main middle, go along the outskirts and always check. Because you never know if they're going to spawn in the corners. So, while going to look at the arc, you know, go around the corners. See if you find anybody over there. Now, well, it doesn't look like anybody spawned in this area, so I'm still going to go over to my arc and see if I find them. And just like that, I see that there's somebody in Killer Shack. And once again, the arc method has proved to be very useful. So, arc method on Ormond, pretty much the only way you got to do it. Nothing special about it. Pretty easy to find the spawn locations. Alright, so the next map we're going to talk about is going to be the Red Forest map, which is Mother's Dwelling and Temple of Purgation. Let's go ahead and start with Mother's Dwelling. It is a huge, huge, huge map. So how do you find survivors? Your best bet is using the arc rule on this map because it is such a large map. Let's go ahead and check out where we spawned. We have the main building right over here. So I believe the area that we spawned in is right over here. So we're going to draw an arrow this way. Use the arc rule. And we're going to assume that survivors are going to be over there. Let's go ahead and check our accuracy and run straight there. Looks like no survivors in the first jungle gym, but we found some survivors in the second one. And just like that, we can initiate chase and waste a little bit next to almost no time. And now you can almost always use that no matter where you spawn. Like if you spawn in the basement, you'll draw straight through the main building. You'll probably find them split up between here. This little uh, generator over here and then this one that we initially found them on. Or if you spawn on this side of the map, they're probably going to be working on a gen in this area or the one at Killer Shack. Follow those guidelines for Mother's Dwelling and you'll be able to find a survivor pretty fast. It is a very, very large map, so if you have survivors hiding, though, it can be difficult to get that first chase initiated. Alright, so now we're going to talk about the Temple of Purgation. This one is a little weird. You would think that you would follow the arc rule on this map, but it's actually quite strange. So let's say you spawn here as killer. You more than likely are going to find your survivors right over in this area, or right over in this area, versus following the arc rule and going all the way across the map, thinking that there are survivors there. If you follow this, usually you'll find a survivor, sometimes you'll get unlucky, but let's say you spawn here, like near the basement, the same thing applies. You'll go to this area and this area, and you more than likely will find a survivor versus going straight through, looking for them over here. Let me go ahead and demonstrate. So, we spawned right over here as killer. The first thing we're going to do is either go this way or go straight this way. We go straight towards this gen, and we instantly find a survivor, and we can start chase. Now, that's kind of the general guideline for the Temple of Purgation. It's very weird, because sometimes you can go you know, this way and find a survivor. Sometimes you won't. So instead of going all the way over here, your best bet will still be to circle around here. Because the survivors are going to be lingering if they don't spawn, you know, right next to you. And that's something you have to consider. Because this map is huge, and unlike Mother's Dwelling, the arc rule doesn't work very well. They can spawn, like if you're here, they can spawn here, 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 or here. But your still better bet is checking the ones that are closest to you, because those have the higher chances to spawn the survivors. But if they don't, just follow the X's along the way to the other spawn locations, which aren't as likely, but they can still spawn there. That's why I say reliably. You want to check on the areas next to you first, instead of just dedicating yourself running all the way to the other side of the map and looking for the survivors. Alright, so the next map and the final map we're going to be talking about is going to be the Dead Dog Saloon. This one is pretty easy. The arc rule kind of applies to it. 
no matter where you spawn, you're going to use the arc wool to find the survivors. So let's look at it like this. I spawned right over here. Now, because there's two main areas of the building, we're going to draw arrows here and here. And assume that survivors are going to spawn this way. Assume there maybe will spawn somewhere around the saloon. Probably not in it. So let's go ahead and check it out. First thing I do is run straight there. He had objects, so I already saw him. But we already see that's his spawn location. We're going to check to see if any more survivors are lingering in the area. Doesn't look like it. He was probably just the only one. Now we're going to check the other area in which we do see that there are more survivors chilling in this area. So the arc rule works very good on this map. Let's go ahead and pull up the second example. I have so many files in here, I'm losing track. All right, so last one, we go right in here. And we spawn in the saloon. Let's go ahead and get rid of these. Whoops, a little too far. We spawn here, so we're gonna use the arc. We'll probably go straight here, and or these areas are gonna be where the survivors spawn. So let's go ahead and check it out. First area I'm gonna go is pretty much straight towards the arc. And in doing that, I instantly found a survivor. Let's go ahead and check around the area. And we found more chilling by the gen. They're not really along the arc, they're kind of between it, but still, they are there. And if we follow this arc over here, we found some over here. So, using this rule, you can almost always find the survivors as fast as possible. And initiate a chase, wasting no time. Alright, well, that was the last stop for learning the spawn locations of all the maps. That took a lot of time to clip, a lot of time to put these all together. So if you guys enjoyed the effort I put in to help show you guys the spawn locations, or you learned a few things, feel free to like, comment, subscribe, all that jazz. I'm kind of tired of talking because I've been editing these clips for like four hours. You know, that may not seem like much, but I've been at it for like four hours straight. I haven't taken a break. I need to drink water. Whatever, dudes. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the videos. I'll see you guys in the fog. Have a good rest of your day, night, evening, morning, whatever time it is, wherever you guys live. And uh peace. It was thunder and lightning. It was awfully